Happy Juneteenth, everyone. I'm going to talk about some of the things that are going to be occurring over the next few days and what it means prophetically speaking, what God's been speaking to me. Now today's June 19th or Juneteenth, and Juneteenth is a holiday commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. Freedom finally came on June 19th, 1865, when some 2,000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. I'm here located in Houston, Texas, about an hour to 45 minutes from Galveston. So this definitely hits close to home. And the Army announced that more than 250,000 enslaved Black people in the States were now free by executive decree. This day came to be known as Juneteenth by the newly freed people in Texas. So I believe this is just more confirmation of how close we are to, and actually that we're actually in the midst of this transpiring, this great jubilee. The Lord's been talking to me about a jubilee. So I believe this speaks to us prophetically of what God is declaring over his remnant and and manifesting in the natural, even as we speak, and that he is going to um, release from bondage the house of Israel, the, the remnant of Israel that was scattered throughout the nations and made slave to foreign nations. And we know that um, those who were brought here and put in slavery were part of the tribes of Israel. And also the natives who were here, the Native Americans who were here and also were um, enslaved and slaughtered uh, were also part of God's remnant, God's uh, tr lost tribes. And so this is the year of Jubilee. And he's reiterating this through June 19th and or Juneteenth that he is bringing liberation, freedom, and great reward to Israel. And I'm not just speaking of, of the nation of Israel, um, like under Netanyahu, I'm talking about because many that are there are um, not truly the, the the Israel. Okay, the Bible says in Revelation it says, "I know who those I know those who say they are Jews but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan." So there's been this um, this conspiracy, this um, this 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 counterfeit of the devil to convince Earth that that a certain people group are this this are israel that they are actually not israel so god is bringing his people um to their identity he's awakening uh israel uh the remnant scattered throughout the nations so that he can um bring about the glory of zion as well so um, both israel and um and the gentiles and the jews together Right. And so we're seeing um, the Ezekiel 37 prophecy take place. We're in the cusp of Ezekiel 37. The Valley of Dry Bones are being brought back to life and um, the northern and the southern kingdom are being brought together as one so that um, Zion can come into its fullness. OK. So moving into June 20th, we have the summer solstice, and we know that the Lord speaks through the sun, moon, and the stars, through the celestial bodies, or what we find as the governing bodies in the book of Genesis. God placed the uh, celestial bodies in the heavens to be for signs, to be for seasons, and to uh, govern the earth, to help govern the earth. So um, there's a governmental element within the celestial bodies. And Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour out speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. And so I take heed and I pay attention to the knowledge displayed 
through the celestial bodies and through the speech that they release day and night, night after night, day after day. Okay, because that's what Psalm 19 says that these heavenly bodies do. And so we have on June 20th, the summer solstice, and this is the longest day of the year. And we know that the sun um, represents the father, our heavenly father. The sun represents the father figure. And this is the longest day of the year, the time of the most light. This is when the sun is at the highest point or furthest away from the earth. And so it's really in its ascension and its full ascension and giving the most light to earth and giving the longest day of the year. And so God is saying through the summer solstice that this is the beginning of summer. Um, this is a season of things being brought into um, maturity, into bloom. I talked about in my last video about how it is time to bloom. And this is a time where we see, you know, um, the fruit really come forth and uh, things blooming and blossoming into its full maturity. And the summer is about really coming into uh, ascension, right? The sun is at its highest point. And so we're ascending with Christ, with our Heavenly Father, um, with with the Father, Yahweh, right? And so we've got the summer solstice tomorrow. And the interesting thing is that we're going to go straight into a full moon on June 21st. A full moon is actually a feast day unto the Lord. The new moon, which marks the beginning of a month, and the full moon, which marks the midpoint of the month, are, according to scripture, times of celebration and festivity and um, just meditating on God and preparing us for the next um, the next time period, okay? So the new moon's all about implementing the new um, letting go of things that need to be let go of and starting into a new month, a new beginning. So the full moon on the 21st is really um, a time to reflect, see what might be working, what might not be working, um, and ultimately just to acknowledge the Lord and to meditate and see where you're at. And so these feast days are a beautiful gift from God, okay? And I know some people will say, well, we don't need um, an altar. I'm here at my altar recording this video, but on full moons and new moons and even throughout the month, I make it a regular practice to light candles, to light my incense, to come to my altar, to meditate, to sit, to reflect, to spend time with the Lord. And this is really what these new moons and full moons are about. It's about an opportunity to reflect and to spend time intimate with God. It's like a birthday. When a birthday comes around, we don't say, well, we don't need the birthday anymore. Um, it's unnecessary, right? Um, these practices of candles and altar and all that is Old Testament stuff, and we don't need that, and that's actually spooky. It's not spooky at all. It's just like a birthday. A birthday is a special day, a special time, and when you surround yourself with the people you love or the people you love surround you to really celebrate you and to acknowledge you, and this is what these special days that God has appointed to his people, um, this is what they are so that we can s be surrounded by God and come near to God. Rem it's a remembrance to come near to God, surround yourself with God, to get still and to acknowledge him and to see what he wants to share with you. And so I encourage all to, um, to, to, to hone in on this opportunity to do that. So we've got the full moon on June 21st and the moon represents the mother or the bride or the woman. Um, so they're coming into a marriage point. So this isn't always how the summer solstice lands with, with um, accompaniment with a full moon, but this is how it's landing this year. And this is why I also think it's a special message from the Lord in a special time. And I believe that the speech that these heavenly bodies are 
displaying for us is showing us that this is a time where uh, the bride of Christ is marrying the Lord. right and um giving birth to christ in the earth and i talked about this on my last video as well um we're birthing christ into the earth and so the heavenly bodies are reflecting this and this full moon is in the sign of capricorn in hebrew capricorn is known as getty and because this full moon is in Capricorn, it's all about remembering who we are and being in alignment with who we are in our purpose. And God's been really reiterating to me the importance of understanding who we are. And he's even been giving me the visual of Simba on the Lion King, right? So Simba um, is supposed to be the heir to the throne right but the devil or scar um comes up with this whole plot to steal the throne illegally and he sets simba up he sets his father up kills the father then projects all the blame and shame on simba causing simba to go into the wilderness for many years and to run away from his purpose, his destiny, and kind of lose sight of his identity and who he was. And it wasn't until his encounter with, as he matured, got to a certain um, age that he encountered um, the prophet, so to speak, uh, the monkey who allowed him to go into a vision and see his father say, remember who you are. And he received the healing and the understanding and the identity that he needed to go back and to fulfill his purpose. So this is really about tapping into remembering who we are, why we're here, and how we're going to serve humanity and how we really need to be courageous and moving forward in that. Too. So God is really um, having us address the childhood wounds, the ch child trauma, the trauma that we've experienced, the narratives that the enemy tries to um press on our on our souls and get us to run away from purpose but god is saying that we have to face those fears release them so that we can come into our divine calling and destiny because humanity depends on it simba when he went back to the pride land like it was taken over it was run over by the hyenas it was uh there was no food um things were scarce um the corrupt bad guys were in place in position of power and so in order for um things to be made right in the land simba had to take his place and so this is what god has been illustrating for me okay and so another way that he illustrated this um just um healing he's been talking about healing of our bloodline right because we're the generational curse breakers so the healing of our bloodline the healing of our family tree at the root and the impact that's going to make um for the past present which we represent the present and the future and that is our children and their children's children but through our obedience it's going to go it's going to affect the past the present and the future and it's going to um just cleanse and heal our family tree at the very roots and he showed me this as well in the movie madam webb i watched it on sunday and it's very powerful if you can catch it in the spirit um but it it, it displays all about this uncovering of hidden truths that bring greater levels of healing to our inner child allowing for a greater level of healing and understanding of who we are giving us the ability to let go of the wounds of our past and to more fully step into the aspect of our divinity and have childlike faith trust and innocence restored to us and this is enabling us to embody the true essence of who God created us to be before the fall. We are becoming more free than ever before 
from sin, shame, fear, and pride and stepping into this new reality through way of inner healing that is so deep it reaches down into the very DNA allowing us to heal the perpetual sin, iniquity, and wounds repeating in our bloodline. We as the cho chosen ones are the generation who are liberating our entire family tree at the root as we transmute or transfigure into the manifestation of the sons of God that the whole earth has been groaning for. The manifestation of the sons of God, God's end time forerunners will then release the level of healing needed to restore and release not only our family tree at the root, but all of humanity who would believe and receive him. By surrendering to Christ and coming up higher into ascension with Christ, we are allowing for ourselves to become conduits or circuit boards in which God circuits and manifests through to reach and release our bloodline into greater perfection and harmony, both in the past, present, and future, synchronizing the harmony between the entire family tree and allowing us to serve humanity on a greater level of divine love and more practically heal the torn down cities and manifest his kingdom here on earth. This is what God means when he says we are experiencing DNA upgrades. As our DNA upgrades begin to increasingly integrate and synchronize with God's will and essence, we will be entrusted with greater access to spiritual gifts and abilities that have been sitting dormant within, and we will utilize these abilities to better serve humanity and prepare the earth for his return and his kingdom here on earth. And we cannot access this level of transformation through outward works or old patterns or thinking of logic. This transformation takes place within and requires a deep inner work, reflection, and metamorphosis. Healing is required to ascend into these new paradigms and kingdom realities. So as we release these traumas and we release the forgiveness, um, we're actually going to be those generational curse breakers because the remnant we are, the chosen ones to uh, redeem our family and our bloodline from the curse. And this is a progressive, um, a progressive thing that is taking place. And so we're coming into the fuller measure of that. And as we um, come into this metamorphosis that we're experiencing now and releasing the forgiveness and the love that we're actually restoring our entire family tree from the root system. And it's going to have a positive effect both for our ancestors that have, who have already passed on, but it's also going to have a healing effect for the, our future generations. And so we're all interconnected um, through our family tree, but then on the greater level, we're all interconnected as, um, you know, as, as a humanity. And so by us doing our individual healing, we're, we're doing our part to bring um, heaven here on earth, to bring uh, healing to the nations and to ultimately prepare humanity for the return of the king, to re the, for the return of Christ. So we are being upgraded down to our very DNA and it's an amazing thing. Now, quickly, I want to go into the full moon in Capricorn there, there on this day, on the 21st, there's also a conjunction that took place in 1941. And what happened in 1941 was World War II and Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor thrusting us into um, full on World War II. And so I believe we're in a climate um, similar. We see um, World War III being really uh, looking like it, we're on the cusp of World War III, right? So we see that there is definitely wars and rumors of war going on very heavily at this time and it is a time of great shaking and uncertainty but i was reminded of what i've heard about america that america is one of the only nations that comes back stronger from war and if you look into history which god has been um since 2020 really teaching me more on history and innovation and the industrial revolution all these things um, like innovation and the housing market, the suburban market, like suburban homes really coming up was all during times of war or right after times of war. And so this is what was meant by America is one of the only nations that comes back stronger. Now, I believe that America will um, continue to 
uh, be a world power, although things are not going to be the, the same, right? Um, the dollar is on its way out and um, a new global um, currency is on its way in and this is going to have an effect on um, the cabal who uses America as its, um, according to the Bible, as its prostitute to um, control the world. And so we're going to see the cabal lose its grip in some ways, but obviously we're going to still see prophecy be fulfilled, but God is in control and he's making sure that the order of Christ and his remnant is rising from the ashes and from the fallen systems that we currently will experience and witness come to an end and a new time of like an industrial revolution, a new time of innovation, a new order come forth. And again, we know that uh, prophecy has to be fulfilled, but within this fulfillment, the sons of God shall also manifest the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So this is a climax of good and evil, and we know who wins.